Welcome to House and Home, Real Estate Real Talk with Dina and Chris. I'm Chris Breitenbach. And I'm Dina Mathis. And today we're going to be talking about making updates to your home that add value versus making updates to your home that enhance your lifestyle. So we kind of see those as two different topics and we'll be exploring all of that. We are chatting it up today with Missy Ionelli from the greater Cincinnati area. She lives in the Mason, Ohio community. Missy is a homeowner. And Chris, she's got a question for us about some updates that she's looking to make to her home and she wants to make sure that they're, uh, they're smart choices. That is wonderful. Before we get to Missy though, I want to start us off with our weekly small business shout out. Um, Dina and I are very passionate about the fact that home is not just where we live. Home is where we live. So we like every week to, to highlight a small business within our community um, and help you introduce you to them. Dina, what's our small business this week? Yeah, so let me just take a step back and really give you the backstory on Missy and I. Uh, Missy and I met over a year ago when we were following a certain journey and we were on the same path to get our yoga teacher certification. So that's how our paths initially crossed. And since then, uh, I have become a huge lover and member of the Drishtik yoga community. So it's become my home uh, away from home within the community. Missy longer than I, because I know she's been a practicing yogi there for a really long time. Um, but we felt it appropriate that we would give our shout out for the week to Drishtik Yoga Studio. Um, so I just wanna let everybody know that Drishtik is not just about um, just about becoming, uh, you know, uh, if you're an experienced yogi, obviously, if you're experienced or whether you are a novice and you're just wanting to try it out, there's a huge array of classes there. Everything from your gentle classes to your hot classes. They offer meditation, a lot of restorative yoga classes. You can take yoga online. Everything is live streamed. So the yoga instructors, as they're streaming live, um, you can take yoga right from your living room. So we want to invite everybody to come out to Drustique, give it a try. And for our viewers, exclusively just for our viewers and listeners, they are offering a 50% off for a one month new student trial. So if you've never been before, maybe you stopped going pre-pandemic and you're ready to start back up again, or maybe you're just brand new to yoga, but this is a great way for you to try it out. Uh, like I said, at 50% off, you just want to mention the name of our podcast, House and Home Chat, Real Estate Real Talk, and they will offer you that 50% discount, which comes out to be about 30 bucks. So it's a really good that's deal. That's a great, that's yeah. a great deal. And yeah. thank you to uh, the Yoga Studio for doing that uh, for us, for all of us. Um, and I hope you get a chance to get yourself introduced to them. Yeah. So Missy, let's turn it over to you. What is your question? Well, first, thanks well, for thanks having for me having today. Me I'm excited to get your prof professional opinions. So we've been in our house almost 17 years. And okay. uh, only two rooms have gotten new carpet in all of that time. So we have raised our two girls here. We have a couple of cats. And the girls have recently moved out. We are empty nesters. And hence begins the remodeling, right? Right. And so we definitely want to get some new carpet. And when we went to our particular place that we love to shop, we learned about the luxury vinyl tile mm -hmm. and had no idea that it really even existed for residential, um, you know, installation and things such as that. And we fell in love with some of the looks, um, but it also brought up a lot of questions about is that the right thing to do? Should you take a bedroom and maybe repurpose it and use this vinyl instead of just carpet? Or are new buyers, maybe families, would they really prefer to find carpet um, in those areas? Well, that's a really good question. And it, it's kind of a twofold question. So 
Um, let's tackle first and foremost, the flooring. You're looking to transition. You were uh, looking to replace the, the carpeting because you want something new and different. And it sounds like you're really attracted to this LVT or LVP. Mm -hmm. And first, maybe we should uh, tell our listeners what that is a little bit. It's it's just a, it's, it's a man-made sort of, it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's kind of a hardwood tile look-alike but not exactly. And it's really become all the rage, mm -hmm. I think, in in today's um, home construction and, and remodeling. So Missy, my question before we provide any answers is, how long do you plan to be in your home? Are, are you, do you have a five-year plan or something beyond five years? Well, that is the $20 million question. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, we, we don't know. Um, okay. I'd love we love our house. We love our neighborhood. Um, you know, but life circumstances will eventually take mm -hmm. us elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And we don't know. That could be um, a year from now. It could be five years from now. Okay. So, you know, is this a trendy choice? Will it be around? Those are things that pop into my my brain and, and you know, would like to know. But we definitely have decided to make a change because we feel like, we should at least get some value and some use exactly. out of the upgrade instead of doing it and then moving out. So we've decided to move forward. It's just what exactly should we do in that realm? And, and that's so smart. I yeah. mean, that is exactly what I would recommend to anybody that approaches me about making changes in their life. I'm a really big proponent of, you know, not waiting until tomorrow mm -hmm. for what you can do today. And if that is going to an enhancement and enhance your lifestyle, you're going to like it better, you're going to use it differently, then I say go for it and, and do it today. So as far as using that particular um, material, it, it, it is a trend, it's a newer trend, but it's also a trend that I think is probably around to stay for a little while. Just the cost of lumber these days right. and just the, the high cost of material, that has become a solution and that has become I think a really acceptable and, and even a sought after look and, mm -hmm. and the and the it's become a reasonable um alternative I think to hardwoods. And I the ease of care. Yes. It's so easy to keep up. It's so easy to clean that I think that's very appealing to people. Um okay. Miss, what are you planning? You're talking about repurposing these rooms. What are you thinking about? Well, as Dina mentioned, we met at yoga. I'm a big yogi and I practice every day. And I currently do that either in the foyer or in my kitchen because that's <laughs> where the hardwood is. Mm -hmm. um, right. It, and we all know more, you know, hard yes, surface. Much more difficult to balance on, on carpet. So yeah. I'm definitely, we are taking one of the uh, bedrooms and converting it to a yoga room so that I can right. practice there and maybe even have people over uh, eventually for some. <laughs> and the other, the other room, the other room, again, we just want to do, we do want to brighten up a couple of rooms and do something a little bit different. Um, I'm a big outdoor person, big plant person. So mm -hmm. we may turn that into a bit of a greenhouse, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. It has big windows and gets a lot of sun, gets very warm. So those are just some ideas. Definitely the yoga room um, mm -hmm. and the other rooms up for grabs. But we feel keeping carpet in the master bedroom mm -hmm. and then the other bedroom that we have a bathroom in for our guest um, bedroom would probably be best. So that's kind of what we're thinking, a little half and half, if you will. Okay. And and I would recommend that if you're doing, if you're looking to do it to one room or two rooms, that you go ahead and you do it to the three rooms. So staying consistent within all of those bedrooms with that same material, buyers do like to see consistency in flooring throughout a home. Now, you know, your bedroom is a little different because it's got a, you know, four walls and a door so you can close it off. So it's not like I think you have to take it out into the hallway or into the next room, but staying and remaining consistent within those three bedrooms is probably a good choice. And really just the master bedroom in and of itself is special and it's different and you can do and create anything that you want in there. But really keeping those bedrooms 
within that same family of material and even keeping them in that same look and in that same color tone, I think really unifies the space. And I think buyers will identify with that. Okay, awesome. If you, and if you want to keep, I agree with Dina, if you're going to do uh, one or two of the bedrooms, I would go ahead and do all three. It sounds like the um, LVT would work really well for the purposes of those bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in that other bedroom with the, with the bathroom, you put a nice rug down. And so that gives it more of that bedroom feel, yet keeping it consistent with the other rooms. Yeah, and because pit pets and kids and everything else, I will tell you, most kid, most people these days um, don't really prefer the carpet in a lot of cases. Oh, I mm -hmm. see that more and more mm -hmm. as we walk into a home. Hardwoods are, have always historically been the preferred option, but like I said, it's becoming more on trend and more mm -hmm. acceptable. And even with these with these new looks, a lot of people are looking to those LVT, LVP um, options. Now, the second part of her question really is about repurposing mm -hmm. those rooms. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that, Chris? I, I love it. Um, Missy, I'm in the same place that you are. And so we have repurposed one of our bedrooms to an office. Uh, both my husband and I are working from home. So I love the fact that you live in your home. And if you want to make a yoga studio, if you want to make a greenhouse room, um, go for it because you are going to get joy out of those, both of those. Awesome. And to me, they're both easy to convert. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the big component. I think taking a room, taking a uh, I don't is it a four bedroom home, Missy? It is. Yeah. So taking a four bedroom home and then taking one of those bedrooms and converting it into a closet or converting it into another room that is so specific that you lose a bedroom that in and of itself will change the value of your home. So I'm never gonna recommend mm -hmm. that you do something like that because all of a sudden your four bedroom home is turned into a three bedroom home. But by making it a yoga studio or a plant room mm -hmm. or something, even, even if you brought in shelving and other things to create the space mm -hmm. and the look of the space that you want and brings you that joy and that usability today, go for it and do that. But when it's time to sell and you call me, Missy, <laughs> um, I'm going to say, you know, let's turn the look mm -hmm. back into a bedroom. Let's stage this as a bedroom because oftentimes buyers, for one, have an inability to visualize what they can't necessarily see. So mm -hmm. that's where we want to make repurpose those rooms or purpose those rooms back into what their true original intent was as bedrooms. But in the interim, like Chris said, enjoy your space, love your space, yes. do your yoga and awesome. grow your plants. Well, <laughs> and I would that. love to see pictures. I'd yeah. love to see before and after pictures. Well, actually what's going to happen is Missy's going to hold a yoga class. She's going to instruct oh, and we're both going to be her her uh, practitioners, right? <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love Dina it. has not seen me do yoga. <laughs> I have been trying to get her, but she's just so far, I've, I'm just, she's been a little reluctant. <laughs> but maybe in the privacy of someone's home um, versus in the, in the studio would be a little less intimidating. Yeah. We'll see. So Missy, does that address your question, does that help to guide you a little bit about the choices Absolutely. that you're making? You know, there are definitely pros and cons to everything. So mm -hmm. having your insight um, and professional opinions, very helpful as we move forward. Well, thank Great. you. And we will look forward to seeing whatever beautiful things you create in your home. Can't wait. Thank you thank so Thank you much. for joining us, Missy. Thanks, Take care. Missy. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So uh, thanks to Missy. We appreciate her being here and asking that question. And really, Missy is a question focused on she has a home and she's living in her home. She's planning to um, continue to be there for a little while. We oftentimes get this question when somebody is thinking of moving in the near future. So 
Dina, would your answer be different if somebody said, I'm, I'm preparing my house for the market, what would you do? Oh yeah, absolutely. So if somebody calls as they often do, um, I'm planning to move in the next month, two months, three months, six months, can you come to my home and help me, just guide me through the things that I need to do to update my home? And the answer to that question really is going to be completely different than the mm -hmm. whole livability and enjoying and enhancing your space um, that Missy is doing to her home. And um, the way that I look at it is, is this. So when you walk into a home, you're, you're getting a first impression. And your first impression is often that lasting impression. Mm -hmm. Buyers often know mm -hmm. within those first 10 seconds that they walk into a home, whether they like that house or not. Mm -hmm. So when we're making improvements and enhancements, I'm looking at the overall surface space being your walls and your floors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where, again, every home is, there's a specific situation, but that's where typically I'm looking at first, that first impression, that entry, the flooring, and is, is that inviting? Is that fresh and clean? Mm -hmm. Is that, are the colors on trend? Are they neutral? And um, are they in good condition? Right, right. I agree that freshness when you walk up to a front door, you enter a home, um, really is going to make a difference to a buyer and says a lot about you as a seller and a homeowner. And if the home looks fresh from the beginning, then the end expectation is this homeowner is probably taking care of their house very well over the lifetime of ownership. Exactly. That's the impression and that they go into that decision making with that impression. It also affects the price that you're going to get mm -hmm. because if they feel they feel like it's been well cared for, then they're not going to feel like they need to knock on that price mm -hmm. in order to you know, to, to accommodate any things that might come up, right. you know, any, any maintenance issues. So, so yeah, that's, that's the, those are really the, the first things that I would think about and look at. And then of course, you're looking at some specifics. Um, but one thing I would not really recommend, I mean, when somebody calls you and they want to put their house on the market, it's not time to do a full on remodel mm -hmm. like HGTV might suggest. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really about what I like to call the, the lipstick and makeup. Right. You know, right. you want to maybe update some lighting fixtures that'll help bring you into the new millennium here, right? Mm -hmm. Into the current trends, whether you like them or not, you should really pick, I think, what is current in trend, but also neutral enough. Nothing, nothing tastes specific. And to be honest, I begin before we enter the house. So I always step outside and I look at the home from the street. Uh, curb Curve appeal, appeal of the home is probably one of the most important things in my opinion, and that whole front door area. You're so so right. I like a front door that has been painted and caulked and clean. And then I'll be honest, I uh, my biggest thing is probably the cleanliness of a home makes a huge difference. And what a nice thing if you don't really have a lot of money to put in, you can clean it yourself, or I do recommend having somebody come in and really doing that deep, deep clean. dive yeah. clean yeah. Yeah, exactly. that makes your home sparkle. Exactly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Curb appeal is everything. Mm -hmm. So don't neglect the front of the house and just go to the interior. You want that first that first impression is is in that driveway, you mm -hmm. know, and as they're pulling mm -hmm. up and as they're walking to your front walkway. So all of those things are critical. And those are some attention to detail things that will really help you get a big bang for your buck. And as we always suggest, having that professional walk through your home and helping you give ideas, whether it is, hey, I'm going to be in my home for five to 10 years, what would you do? Or I'm getting ready to list in the very near future. Dean and I are the professionals at that. We would be more than happy to meet with you, walk your house and make suggestions. It always breaks my heart when somebody has spent a fortune on yeah, yeah. something to prepare their home for market. Yeah. And I give them a long list that would not have included what they did. Exactly. So you can reach us at Dean and Chris Real Talk at gmail.com. And we'd be happy to schedule an appointment for that. 
Absolutely. That, that there's nothing worse than somebody having made updates and then calling you. And then you're like, well, I've got a list of like 20 more things you should be doing. (laughs) None of which were the things that you already did. So priorities. we'll We'll look forward to hearing from you. Um, Today, our house and home chat portion was really about a question that a a viewer and a listener had. And we welcome any of those questions from you anytime. Mm -hmm. You can reach us at Dina and Chris Real Talk at gmail.com. Yeah, we would be happy to address your question on any one of our podcasts. So moving forward into the Real Estate Real Talk, we're actually going to stay on the same topic. And um, within our real estate facts and figures, uh, there is a company that puts out a report every year. It's called the Cost Versus Value Reports. And it looks at upgrades and renovations um, quick fixes that people may do to their homes. And what's your expectation should be on return on investment right. for those updates? And that's a little bit different than the whole preparing your house for the market. This is the value that you're going to get out of the mm-hmm. updates. And what's interesting is I look at this report every year. I've been sharing it with people for years. I just um, pulled up the 2020 report And one of the things that always surprises me is how much you get out of a garage door replacement. I will say that this year in 2020, a homeowner can expect to get an uh, almost an 80% return. So on the garage door? On a garage door. So if you spent a thousand dollars on a garage door, you can expect that your return would be about eight hundred dollars added to your sales price of your home. Last year in 2019, I think it was like 129%. So I was wow. telling everybody that garage door. So again, that well, that first impression. Right. That was gonna, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, it is the first thing that you look at when you drive up the driveway. And yeah. So it, it does make sense. You know, and we do, We I watch HGTV and I always laugh <laughs> when they show HGTV and they add a front porch or they add a deck and all of a sudden the house is going to sell for 50,000 more. more. Yes, exactly. (laughs) That's not necessarily the reality. That's not real life. No. But you can add things to your home. I I wouldn't suggest doing them at the point of sale at the time that you're looking to move. But if you're considering finishing off a basement space, if you're considering, I mean, the outdoor living spaces have become all the rage. Mm -hmm. If you are considering adding more square footage generally to your home in some capacity, capacity Mm -hmm. and and it's a livability factor for you with the intent that in the short term you're you're going to move Mm -hmm. it's not a bad investment it's actually a a really good investment when you're looking to add more square footage absolutely don't think you're going to put that deck on and all of a sudden you can add a hundred thousand a hundred thousand to your home that that's not going to happen yeah (laughs) yeah The, the, the reality is in The Cincinnati area, if you add a composite deck, it's actually one of the best things you can do because in uh, in 2020, you would have seen an 88.6% return on your investment. So again, what you put into it, you're not going to get double out of it. Or double, but. But you will get a significant return and it will make you more sellable and sell probably at a higher price than a similar listing. And that's a great point. It'll make you more sellable. So when you've got another home that you're competing with and yours has a better outdoor space, again, those things that have become really important, Mm -hmm. people are taking their lives and their time and putting TVs outside Mm -hmm. and covered spaces and things. So when you're creating a, a more beautiful outdoor space, then you're going to become more sellable than than your competition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the top two um, items that will give you the highest return on your investment, the number one for 2020 was manufactured stone veneer. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Actually provided a 95.4% return on investment. So that is not what I would have expected. Yeah, but um, that is the reality. And that's why I love getting the input of 
uh, like the company that does this cost versus value report is they see things a little differently than we do. And this is this is their wheelhouse. And so we also uh, mentioned the deck edition was next in line mm -hmm. and followed by, I believe it was minor kitchen remodels and master suite additions. Ooh, who wouldn't want a master suite oh, edition? Absolutely. That sounds, you know, spa and the whole, <laughs> you know, hotel spa like. Anytime you can create that in your home, um, then then go for it and do it. So yeah, if you've got more of a long-term plan and you're looking to enhance your living, creating these spaces, you really want to look at the dollars. Um, invested versus the outcome. And this report is a great place to, I think, identify where you're mm -hmm. going to get your biggest bang for your buck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I think that's all that we have for today. Great. Great. Well, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like us and subscribe. Um, and if you're local, check out Durst Teak Yoga Studio. Um, Yes, please um, check out Drishtik. They're located in Mason, Ohio. They're on Snyder Road, right there between 42 and Tylersville. Mm -hmm. And they're just a, a great community of yogi teachers and students. We'd love to have you out there. And again, exclusively to our listeners, like us on YouTube and subscribe to us on our podcast. And you can mention the name of our podcast and get that 50% off for your first month. So give us a try. Wonderful. Hey, next time we will be talking with a local mortgage lender about real estate rates and real estate trends, um, of course, covering all things house and home. And this is House and Home Chat, Real Estate Real Talk with Dina and Chris. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.